Hi there, and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on how to carry out a Weibull regression in Stata. In order to do so, let's start by just typing in web use KVA. And we do that in order to load the Stata uh, example data set that ends up being used in a lot of these survival models. And these are data on 12 machines for which we've uh, generators, for which we've measured fail time in hours. So basically all these 12 machines have been allowed to run and when they fail we just write down how many hours uh, it was that they failed at. So for example machine number 6 failed at 100 hours, machine number 12 failed at 30. We're interested in not just sort of the abstract distribution of, of uh, failure time but we're interested more practically in the effect of two predictor variables load and bearings on fail time. So here we see that there are a lot of uh, different values possible for load, which is actually overload, as you can see here, measured in KVA. And we have a kind of dummy variable here, bearings, with uh, zero representing the absence of new bearings, and one meaning that that particular machine does have uh, new bearings. And so what we would like to see, we'd like to see a sort of a survival model, and I'm going to go ahead and use the Weibull distribution some of you might already have picked this distribution because it's theoretically warranted or you have some reason to do so. I'm going to spend a little bit of time at the end of this tutorial talking about why you might want to use um, the Weibull model in comparison you know, to some other models that also exist in the uh, streg family of commands for Stata. But let's first go ahead and do our Weibull regression. Okay, So we're going to use the command streg and because these data have already been st set uh, you do not have to worry about preparing them. In another tutorial, I do discuss how to create your own data or how to prepare your data, rather, for this kind of survival analysis. Here we don't have to worry about it because the job is being done in the sample data set. So we type in streg and then we type in our predictors, load and bearings. Because we've already ST set the data, we don't have to worry about fail time. Fail time is already recognized as our outcome of interest. We put a comma. We put a D for distribution and then within parentheses we type in Weibull for the Weibull distribution. Later we'll do this with a Gompertz distribution as well. Let's go ahead and run this model though. So here are some important sort of pieces of information right at the beginning. We know that failure is, 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 is coded here as one. We have our analysis time as fail time. We run through the model and we see it's significant, we have a chi-squared value, but here, here are the two key lines here for the purposes of this regression. We see that for every one unit increase in load, the hazard, or the risk in this case of the machine failing, uh, is 1.6 times higher. And we see that that's significant. Next we see that for bearings the hazard ratio is actually below 1. Now keeping in mind that a value of 0 for bearings meant no new bearings, and a value of 1 meant that it did have new bearings. The fact that the hazard ratio is below 1 tells us that having new bearings is a good thing. If this hazard ratio was above 1, it meant that it would mean that having bearings increased the failure uh, uh, likelihood of a generator at a given time. So already we can make some inferences here. And let's not forget these p-values, of course. We can infer that having new bearings is uh, a good thing in terms of extending um, the amount of time that a generator is going to function before failing. And we can tell that uh, overload here or load is a bad thing to the extent that you know having greater load uh, is going to increase the chances of a generator failing at a particular time. So what would be very, very handy for us to see here at this point, I think, is a little graphic. Okay, So I'm going to highlight the code here. It's st curve is the command, then I put a comma. Next, I just typed in survival. Okay, Next here, it says at 1, if you can't see it. And within parentheses, bearings equals 0. No comma here, just a space, and then I put at 2. Within parentheses, bearings equals 1. And without a comma, I just added scheme S1 color because that's a color scheme I like. Uh, you needn't put that there, but I have just because I like it. And let's run that model and bring in the graph for you to look at. Okay, 
So a survival of one basically means uh, all of the machines here, when you start out, um, are you know they are functioning. And when we when we see the drop off here, we see that as the time elongates over here, uh, the odds of survival go down. Now we entered in that at one at two stuff here, so we could separate uh, visually what happens for machines that do not have new bearings, which are these, which are represented here in this green line versus machines that do have new bearings that are represented here in this orange line. And we see that the orange line is to the right of the green line, okay? Which indicates that these machines here, they survive longer. So that, that you know, that's an interesting thing to, uh, to find out that having new bearings uh, does help. And as you can envision, that would be just the kind of question of practical interest that, you know, um, that might be relevant in, a, in a, whether an academic study or an industrial study. I do want to point out that we can run some post-estimation commands to see how solid, basically, our assumption is that the Weibull distribution should be used. Uh, right after we run the, the Weibull regression, we can just type in estat ic to get a Kaiki's information criterion, which we see here. And if we wanted to, by the way, get that for a rival model, we could do it with a Gompertz distribution, which I've done here, streg load bearings, comma, D, parentheses, Gompertz, followed by estat ic. And interestingly here, we see that the lower AIC is possessed by the Gompertz model, which strongly suggests that uh, we could prefer a Gompertz uh, distribution here instead of uh, Weibull to do the regression. Um, let's pu put it this way though, you might not be interested in doing, you know, four or five different kinds of uh, survival models here and doing an uh, Akaiki's information criterion for each one. It might be the case that you or your professor, you know, you, you've picked already uh, the Weibull distribution uh, for whatever reason and you just want to demonstrate that it's a valid valid choice. You might not be interested in whether it's the best choice, the optimal choice. You just want to show that it's legitimate. In order to do so, we're going to run a couple of tests here, okay? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to fit a new model for generalized gamma distribution, okay? So we're going to type in streg load bearings, comma, d, in parentheses g gamma, all one word for generalized gamma, followed by the no log option. Then right after that, we're going to do uh, this test here that I've highlighted on Kappa. And rather than talk you through this math, I'm just going to show you the output and what it means for uh, determining whether, uh, you know, whether this use of the Weibull regression was warranted. The first thing we want to look at here is the p-value for Kappa. If this p-value is uh, over 0 0.05, uh, then that's a good thing uh, for, your, for your use of Weibull. And the same over here. For this, uh, for this kappa test. So here we see that we have quite high p-values and using this interpretation we could, we could say that uh, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, you know, it's, let's, or let's put it this way, it's legitimate that we're using Weibull regression here. It might not have the lowest uh, Akaiki's information criterion, but it's still good enough to stand. That's what these figures uh, tell us here. I do want to encourage you here before I sign off to um, maybe browse through SSC, which is an archive of user written stata commands, and maybe install, you know, some Weibull regression commands like wbull, which I already have installed, so it won't do anything when I do this. Um, once you have wbull, you can just type in your uh, survival variable here, your failure variable uh, here, fail time. And, you know, here you would get your scale parameter B and your shape parameter uh, C. And where that, you know, could be useful is um, not necessarily in the case of a regression model like the one we just ran, but if you want to do some cumulative uh, probability, you know, mapping uh, using a calculator, like let's say that, you know, we took all these fail time data and we want to know, for example, uh, how, what percentage of machines are going to fail like 120 minutes in, right? That's the kind of question for which uh, when we know the shape and scale, we can go and use, um, we can use calculators, you know, which there are plenty on the web, or we can just use scientific calculators and answer questions of that kind. 
I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and I would like to invite you to visit 272analytics.com for access to all our free statistics tutorials in Stata, SPSS, R, eViews, and Minitab. Here at 272analytics.com we provide data consulting primarily to graduate students. Therefore we work very closely with you in order to perfect your chapter 3 and chapter 4. That means helping you design surveys, uh, getting your data input, assisting you with fashioning appropriate research questions and hypotheses, uh, getting your data, extracting them, transforming them, cleaning them, uh, putting them through analysis, uh, interpreting them, explaining them to you so that at the end of the day you know exactly what story your data tell, why they matter, what they mean in a manner that lets you write a, a perfect chapter 4 uh, following a perfect chapter 3 and lets you defend your dissertation or thesis with complete confidence. We provide ethical consulting. It's not a writing service, so you will be responsible for taking our blueprint, our assistance, our consulting, and transforming them into an appropriate academic project for yourself. I'd also like to remind you that we provide the same services to undergraduate students who are working with quantitatively oriented assignments. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.